they're dumb. Whoa, hey, we're, we started. And that's kind of coming with my slides. I was confessing about how, as a child, I was damaged, <laughs> apparently, <laughs> in many, many ways. Uh, welcome again to Keith Explains. Uh, it's another Thursday. It's the first Thursday of the month. We're taping again. Uh, as you may have noticed, uh, we've switched back to the summer studio. That's the indoor <laughs> studio. During the winters, we can tape outdoors uh, amongst the trees. Uh, but once once it gets to late spring, we're forced back indoors because it's not dark enough early. See, it's got to be dark to tape because we have lights. And since we have lights and we need to turn them on, you can't have other light coming in. That ruins it somehow. I don't, I'm not a light person. We hire some of the best light people. They come down from LucasArts twice a month. Uh, they come down for the dress rehearsal and then they come down for the show. They set up all the lights. Uh, but anyway, indoor studio. Uh, we have a big audience this time. The other problem with the indoor studio is it's smaller. So we're only able to fit about 60 or 70 people in here. <laughs> the outdoor studio is just, you know, people as far as the woods will take them. So we, we don't know. We don't even bother to do tickets for the winter things. But for the summer ones, you know, we print up 70 or 80 tickets, and then we auction them off, usually for charity. <laughs> uh, and the lucky winners come. Uh, it's it's kind of nice. Most people wear tuxes, but <laughs> that's, that's the way it is. Uh, so the first piece of big news about the show is we have a new editor. As you know, I got rid of the last editor because he was lame. <clears throat> Wasn't doing his job. Uh, I, I finally went back and watched a show, and apparently he puts all kinds of crap up on the bottom, and puts words and flashes crap behind, and this is not what, his job is to edit, not to attempt to enhance, okay? He, he thought he was a comedian or something. <laughs> and I cannot have that, okay? He, he was mocking me occasionally. <laughs> and, and I didn't like it, so I fired him. And then I paid to have him killed. <laughs> and then I called the guy I paid to have him killed and told him, okay, I don't want him killed. And the guy was like, but I've already cashed the check. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, okay. And he's like, and you really shouldn't write checks for these kinds of things. <laughs> Just so you know, in the future, if you want to have someone killed, it's customary to use cash. And I said, what about a wire transfer? And he's like, no, they'll trace that back to you, and then you're not governor anymore. <laughs> cash, cash, okay? If you're going to do something illegal, cash is great. I was like, okay. He's like, anyway, do you still want him killed? And I was like, no, don't kill him. Uh, can you hurt him? And the guy's like... I'm like, yeah, but I actually charge more for that. <laughs> I'm like, that's kind of peculiar. And he's like, well, funny story. See, killing someone's fast. But hurting him takes a long time. And as you know, time is money. And I'm like, well, what can you do for how long was it going to take you to kill him? And he's like, well, it was going to take about 30 or 40 seconds. I'm like, so do 30 or 40 seconds of something to him. He's like, tell you what, I'll sign him up for a bunch of email spam. Because <laughs> apparently that's pretty quick. So that's that's what I have had done to my editor. I got him signed up for a whole bunch of email spam. Mark my words, he's gonna rue the day. He put up words and crap underneath me. Uh, the other big thing, this is really big news. Uh, we we have finally wrest control of the KeithExplains.tv domain away from the guy that had it, which was another guy named Keith who explained things. But he wasn't as good as me. <laughs> and I, I finally bribed enough people in Tuvia, wherever the hell the country that TV is, to, to take the domain away from him and, and give it to me. And so he, last I heard, he was crushed. And he was thinking of leaving media entirely and going back to his original job, which was like organic chemist. <laughs> so that's something. If... So by the time you guys see this, the KeithExplains.tv domain should no longer point to his show, Keith Explains, where he talked about organic chemistry. And it should point to my show, Keith Explains, where I talk about whatever. <laughs> this. This is what I talk about, okay? So, so people say, what are you going to talk about this week? All week long I've been telling people, 
This week, I'm talking about Vegas. And by Vegas, I mean Las Vegas. Not Vegas, the TV show from the 70s. <laughs> which, which was set in Las Vegas. That's why it was called Vegas. They shortened it, probably for trademark reasons. No, <laughs> Las Vegas, which is... Uh, Loretta and I, we went to Vegas last weekend for a variety of reasons. Um, we went on Friday. We came back on Sunday. Because three days is all the time you need to spend in Vegas. <laughs> you can do everything you need to do in your life in three days in Vegas. <laughs> Two days if you can walk fast. <laughs> we, we spent three days there because we had other stuff to do. Which is we, so we flew into Vegas. We flew southwest. Uh, we flew sa first, uh, first class southwest. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's lovely. A lot of people don't know southwest has first class. Most airlines, there's a first class section of the plane at the beginning, like the first eight rows are first class, and then it's cattle car. Southwest has separate planes <laughs> for first class. You go to a different gate, it's a beautiful plane. The whole plane is first class, and it only fits like 16 rows. Um, so you get on the plane, you know, they give you free nuts, they give you free beverages. Um, other than that, it's exactly like Southwest. You don't get an assigned seat, so there's a rush to get on to first class. <laughs> But luckily, we managed to get on, you know, like the seventh or eighth person out of the eight people on the plane. So we got good <laughs> seats. Uh, the nuts are hot, unlike in, you know, Southwest cattle car class. They're, they're hot nuts, but they're still in the bags. So the problem then is you've got to open the hot nut bag. And so you're, I don't know why they don't open them. I mean, because truthfully, I burned my fingers and it, it was kind of painful. Anyway, so we flew, we got in, we rented a... Went to the PT Cruiser, actually, this time, because they're cool cars, I'm told. <laughs> and it was there. We, you know, we landed and we got to the rental car place. And as with most rental car places, you know, there's a long line. And there's one guy at the front taking rental car people. So you just stand in line forever, just trudging forward slowly. And there's always people in front of you that apparently have never rented a car before. <laughs> or driven. <laughs> so... You know, you can see they kind of go up and like, yeah, we like to rent a car. And they're like, can I have your driver's license? They're so like, oh, we don't have one. I'm like, okay, here's the manual. Uh, cover your left eye. Read the bottom line. Cover your right eye. What does this sign mean? Okay, here's the steering wheel. We're doing a little test. Let's pretend we're going. Okay, so like. You know, after like an hour, we get to the front of the line and we get a car and then we walk over and they're like, you can take any car in that row. And I'm like, there's one car in that row. <laughs> they're like, you can take any car in that row. <laughs> and I realize it's a test. So I'm like, I guess we'll take that car. And they're like. <laughs> so we go, we get the PT Cruiser. We're driving around. It's, it's a PT Cruiser. They used to be really cool. Like five years ago, and now they're just American cars, apparently. <laughs> <sighs> so we get the car, we drive to our hotel. It's Venetian. Venetian, it's a tall hotel. They built it recently in Las Vegas. So, of course, they built it to look old. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they do that. To me, if I were building a hotel in Las Vegas, it'd look just like the hotels in the Jetsons. <laughs> you know, it'd be very tall, and it'd have crap that stuck out every other floor. And the entire building would have been built on one stilt. <laughs> so that it was like 90 feet in the air. So that technically in Vegas you only had to buy like a six foot by six foot <laughs> section <laughs> of land. Because it's very expensive there, the land. But see, if you just buy the six foot by six foot thing, that's got to be maybe $15,000. And then you put the pipe, you know, the, the stilt on. And then you build your hotel 400 feet in the air. Hmm. But I guess you need a rope or something to carry people up. But <laughs> we could work it out. <coughs> That's a great idea. I'm going to form a corporation to build a Jetson Hotel in Las Vegas. Mark my words, you'll be staying there in a couple of years. So we get to our hotel, Venetian, like I said. It's designed to look like ancient Italy, Venice in particular. Hence the name. <laughs> well, I didn't get that at first. <laughs> like I got there and I was like, okay, it's Italian. And the is like, yes, it's the Venetian. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, Venice? I'm like, the deer? <laughs> He's like, Venice? I'm like, oh, the city, not Venice Sun. <laughs> the food. <laughs> okay, so we get there, and uh, it's Friday, 
as I said, we arrived on Friday. And so we thought, what are we going to do in, in Vegas? And then, then it occurred to me, Blue Man Group's playing in Vegas. Blue Man Group, in fact, is playing at the, the Venetian in Vegas. And they owe me. Because long ago, I, I gave them one of their best things, which is that thing where the Blue Men guys throw the marshmallows at each other and they fill their mouth with marshmallows. <laughs> it was my idea. I gave it to the Blue Man Group. For nothing. For gratis. I was just like sitting in my house and I was like, what if a guy just kept eating marshmallows and his mouth just kept getting bigger and bigger and he could catch them from across the stage and there could be some witty nonverbal banter back and forth. And then I thought, oh, but who could use a thing like that? <laughs> and then it came to me, the Blue Men Group. Because that's exactly what their show is like, except without the marshmallow bit in it yet. So I called them up and I was like, hey, center blue guy. And he's like, yes. And they, you don't hear them in the show, but most of their voices are deep baritones. So he was like, yes. And I was like, I got an idea for you. And he's like, whatever you got, we're going to put it in the show tomorrow. You are a fabulous guy. <laughs> so I told them the idea and they loved it. They loved it. They put it in the show. It's, it's been great. So I, so I get there. So I called Blue Men Group. I was like, and they're like, yes. And I'm like, hey, it's Keith. I'm like, Keith, great to hear from you. What can we do? And I'm like, I'm in Vegas. Can I get tickets? And they're like, anything for you. So I'm like, yeah, okay, right tonight. And they're like, uh, theater's full. <laughs> I'm like, but you just said anything for me. And they said, yes, we'll, we'll kick someone out. <laughs> so all I want to say is I'm sorry, Michael Johnson, or I'm sorry to Michael Jordan and your wife, but you did not get to see Blue Man Group. <laughs> Which isn't too bad because you were down in front and you're freaky tall. So <laughs> the people behind me were happy that you got bumped and not me. And they you know that I got to sit there because I'm normal height, whereas you are really tall. You should not be sitting in the front. We sat in the front couple rows of the theater. We sat in what they called the poncho section. And when I called to get the tickets, they were like, oh, you're in the poncho section. I'm like, okay. And they're like, oh, we give you the poncho. And I'm like, good, because I didn't pack one. <laughs> it didn't occur to me I'd need to pack a poncho to go to Vegas. So we get there. It's Friday night. We sit in the poncho section, and they... There's a poncho on each chair, and we put the poncho on, because what are you going to do? It's Vegas. They've given you a poncho. you got to use it. <laughs> Otherwise, who the hell knows what could get on you? <laughs> okay, so the show starts. It's Blue Man Group. If you've never been to the Blue Man Group show, I, I can't describe it. And if you have been, well, you've seen the show, because it's <laughs> pretty much exactly the same and always has been forever. They've got the weird musical things. They've got the wacky words and crap on the screen and the music and stuff and they got the marshmallow thing i invented and <sighs> after the show we went backstage met with the blue guys of course here here's a funny story uh so you go backstage afterwards and they're of course you know changing so they're showering because it's like a locker room back there and they're blue everywhere <laughs> a lot of people think it's just the heads and the hands no they're blue everywhere because they're method actors <laughs> and many of them have skin conditions <laughs> blue everywhere uh, so that, that was blue men group then we went to bed because I had to be up early Saturday morning I had to be up early for a board meeting that's the reason we went to Vegas is a board meeting um, as, as you know I'm on a variety of boards some public companies some pre-public companies a bunch of charities I'm on a bunch of charity boards in this case, I was on the board for uh, PenisReductionPills.com, <laughs> which is uh, nice company, started by a young man I met probably, I think I met him six or seven months ago. He's, he's got a great company. He's trying to, he's, and, and he, I mean, he called me up. He's like, I need you on the board. And I'm like, I'm really busy. And he's like, I'm trying to restart my company my granddad ran. And my granddad knew your granddad back in the war. And I was like, Okay, what am I going to do? You know, it's, I, I want to help the kids out. So his, his granddad started the original PenisReductionPills.com back after, when he came back after World War II. He and an Italian soldier he met over there, you know, realized that after the war, America's cojones were just huge. It was causing an overconfidence problem in the country. And so they, they decided to do the penis reduction pills. And they, they sold well probably until the 80s, I'm told. Uh, the Reagan and the sex revolution thing just really tanked his sales. It pretty much killed his granddad afterwards. But they had a great run, you know, through the 50s and 60s and the 70s, I guess, were crazy, crazy for those guys. 
Um, but so he, you know, asked me to be on the board. So we're having our second board meeting in Vegas. Uh, you know, kind of get together, bounce some ideas, some marketing things. Uh, <sighs> you know, where should the company go? What can we do for expansion? Other markets we can move into? Uh, there was a discussion about merging with other companies, placebolabs.com. So their CEO <laughs> came and talked about things. But uh, it was kind of a typical board meeting, you know. I, but it, they, they always start early. I don't know why. Like, if, if you're on a board of a company, they want to start 8 a.m. on Saturday. And it's like, it, it's really early. And especially for this board, which is, it's, oh, there's seven of us, because I remember there were eight chairs, the, the secretary. But uh, yeah, there was me, of course. Uh, there was Richard Magnus. That's the, you know, the CEO, grandfather of the original Richard Magnus. Uh, there was Wayne Newton. Uh, we went in Vegas because so many people were local. Uh, you got Wayne Newton on the board. Uh, Wayne... Wayne's on the board because he was friend with Tom Jones. Tom Jones was also on the board. Tom Jones <laughs> was on the board back with his grandfather, which is he he met with him and got Wayne Newton on the board. Uh, we have Sally Ride, the astronaut. She's on the board. Uh, she's she's smart, uh, and she she had a lot of good ideas about the penis reduction placebos, which kind of surprised me because I wouldn't think astronaut would be, but she was smart. Uh, with Clooney, George Clooney is on the board. <laughs> Uh, they got him just because he's cool, and he's freaking cool and smart. I mean, great to talk to. We we went out Saturday night with Clooney, and uh, it was fabulous. Uh, who am I forgetting? Who? Oh, Trump. Trump couldn't make it. Uh, Donald <laughs> Trump's also on the board. He, I guess, put in some money or something. But he <laughs> Trump's an asshat. Is really the way. It is, okay. <laughs> we he came to the last board. He's pompous. Okay. It's just. <laughs> We're, we're probably going to try and get him off the board when his term's up. Because he's not, he's not helping, okay? Everyone else is doing their best for this kid. This, you know, because it's a struggle to get a new company off the ground, especially when you're selling penis reduction pills. Which, <laughs> trust me, do not market themselves. <laughs> it's, it's work. <sighs> no, we, we talked some ideas over. Like I said, we talked about the merger, which I think we're currently not going to look at. Uh, those Placebo Labs guys are nice, but not exactly a perfect mesh of the two companies. And it's early, you know. We Richard really wants to give his company time to build some some equity and stuff. Uh, marketing, a lot of talk about marketing. Uh, Clooney, Clooney came up with a great idea. Clooney came up with the current tagline for the marketing, which is he said, "What if we called it Natural Male Ego Enhancement?" <laughs> and and we were all like stunned because. You think Clooney, you know, actor, idiot. But no, the, man, the man's got <laughs> some brains in him and some cojones, and he came up with a great marketing tagline that I think they've already implemented, and sales have really gone up of late. So that, that was the real reason we were there. So, you know, we got there at 8 a.m., we had the board meeting, we got out. I want to say we got done a little more before noon, then we went and had lunch. Uh, and the great thing about Vegas, you know, you, you can be a celebrity like myself, and you could just walk around and people don't really bother you you know it's <laughs> me and Clooney and Tom Jones you know we're going to lunch in the hotel and for the most part people are ignoring us uh, except for Tom Jones women are throwing their underwear at him but <laughs> apparently that happens everywhere so and he's used to it uh, so we had lunch and then we went back to our rooms we napped a bit uh, I walked around Vegas a lot that Saturday and again it's great. No one bothers me. I'm just marching along the street, you know. Sometimes you can see people take out their cameras and take pictures, but they don't, they aren't coming up and asking for autographs and stuff, which I, I can't do that. You know, if I go to Hollywood, it's, well, it's pretty much paparazzi everywhere, and <laughs> people are bugging me for autographs, and I'm like, look, I'm, I'm just a regular guy who's on TV <laughs> and beloved. Can I go into this store and buy some porn <laughs> with, without you bothering me. And they're like, please just sign this for my kids. And I'm like, fine. <sighs> anyway, so then Saturday night, Saturday night we once saw a Cirque du Soleil show, Cirque du Soleil, the French. Why can't they call it something in English <laughs> that I can spell when I write it down or whatever? Cirque du Soleil, Cirque du... We once saw them French circus people. They have a show called Love. It's based on Beatles music, which is good because it means I can hum it. 
ordinarily they just have weird music at the Cirque du Soleil shows, and I'm like, well, that's going to stick in my brain for a while. <laughs> There's nothing I can do, but all the Beatles stuff is already stuck in my brain. So it's not taking up extra room. Because <laughs> I need all the room for valuable facts, I'm told. So we saw the Beatles show, and it's, it's Beatles music, and people running around and dancing and bending in ways people shouldn't be bending, and <laughs> flying around on little ropes. And I've, I've seen a couple Cirque du Soleil shows, but never you know a permanent one. We've always seen one where they put up a tent, and then they have the show, and then they take down the tent and leave. This one, put in the building, it's permanent. They have so freaking much technology in there. Like, I'm, I'm fascinated by it. So much so that sometimes I'd realize I wasn't watching the show. I was staring at the ceiling. <laughs> where the various things were swooping around. That They had the wires that people were hanging off and spinning. And things spinning inside of other things and raising. and it, 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 Man, there's... Those people are keeping mechanical engineers in business is what they're doing. <laughs> okay? Mechanical engineers pretty much have no jobs anymore because we built everything. <laughs> Except for the Cirque du Soleil show. So their cables and everything. It was, it was amazing. Uh, and the one comment I have, if you go to this Cirque du Soleil show, is after the show is over or before the show begins, talk to the ushers. And after you've talked to the usher for about 60 seconds, say to yourself, okay. I know this is a 19-year-old kid in Las Vegas. Why does he have a Liverpool accent? <laughs> and then keep talking to him and you realize they have trained all of their ushers to have Liverpool accents just to add to the mood. Like, Liverpool, that's where the Beatles are from. We imported everything now because you look exactly like every other 19-year-old skate punk in Vegas <laughs> except for the Liverpoolian accent. Yeah, it was kind of creepy. Okay, so I spent most of Saturday afternoon walking around Vegas from one end of the strip to the other, and then from that end back to the first end, because we were staying at one end, and I thought, I'm a famous man, I should walk around Vegas, give him a little bit of a thrill, you know, see <laughs> some of the strip and stuff, which I haven't seen ever, because I'm not a Vegas person. Anyway, so I'm, I'm marching down Vegas, you know, looking at things, and there are shops, and interesting thing when you're walking around in Vegas. Um, there are guys handing out cards, large packs of them, glossy cards, pictures on them, pictures of women, pictures of naked women generally, with phone numbers, <laughs> and they're struggling to hand them to you, okay? I can walk down the street, there can be six guys in a row, first guy offers me a card, I say no thanks. Second guy offers me a card, I say no thanks. Third guy offers me a card, I say no. Fourth guy, offer, no. Fifth guy will still offer me a card. Why Why is this, okay? What, why wouldn't they be watching me walking by going, he didn't take a card from those first four guys. I bet he was waiting for me <laughs> to offer him a card. As I said, a card with a lovely picture of a naked lady on it and a phone number and some text like, call me. Or, call me and we'll get together. Or, call me and we'll have sex and you'll pay me. <laughs> or, call me and you'll pay me and we'll have sex. Because I <laughs> suspect that's the order it happens in. <laughs> um, and here's my thought. Okay, they're all over the place, okay? When I, when I was walking by myself, I could not go more than 20 steps without this happening to me. When I walked around Florida, not as much. <laughs> Apparently they've learned there's no point to handing them to a guy who's walking next to a girl. It's just going to make the guy angry because the girl's going to hit him <laughs> for taking the card most of the time. And those rare times when it's not going to hurt, maybe he'll ask. He'll be like, hey, can you give me a card? And the guy will be like, no. <laughs> you have a girl next to you. And he's like, no, it's okay. She said it's okay. And the guy's like... <laughs> it's Vegas what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas unless it's contagious <laughs> I think uh, anyway so like I, like I said they're, they're handing these things out all over the place and, and my question was why do the police do anything else I mean it seems to me the, go the cops could send one guy out in a t-shirt and a long pair of pants and have their next three months worth of jobs lined up just <laughs> 
start making phone calls. Like, okay, we got 79 <laughs> cards today. Let's call the first one. Hey, you want to come over and have sex with me? I'll pay you. Sure. Uh, why don't you come by about 4.15? Call the next one. Hey, you want to have sex? I'll pay you. Come by about 4.30. You, you could fill the jails in an evening with women that came by to get paid and have sex with you. It's a, It's crazy. <sighs> anyway, like I said, I did walk around the strip. Uh, it's it's amazing how industrialized this place, pretty much in the middle of a desert, is, and full of plants, <laughs> which is again in the middle of a desert, and very very high. You know, my hotel, I was on the twenty fourth floor. They had express elevators going up to various floors. I was in the first bank of express elevators because the hotel is like forty floors high. Why would you build 40 floors in the middle of a desert? For God's sakes, build it somewhere close to something. That's what I was thinking. And then it occurred to me, of course they built it in the desert. It's the same reason we used to have a computer conference in Ann Arbor, Michigan. There's nothing else to do in Ann Arbor, Michigan. <laughs> so you may as well stay in the hotel and talk computer stuff. Or in this case, there's nothing else to do in the middle of the desert that is Nevada. So you may as well stay in the hotel and gamble. You know, it's a hotel. There's a casino in the hotel. I knew that. What I didn't quite realize was everything in the hotel was connected to everything else only through the casino. <laughs> like I went to check in at the hotel. That's the front desk. Okay, I like to go to my room. You ask someone, how do we get to the room? They're like, well, you go to the casino and you turn right. I'm like, okay, that's directions. You know, go to the casino. I guess I can't miss the casino. No, it wasn't that was the directions. It was... Every single piece of the hotel was connected to the other pieces of the hotel only through the casino. Like, you know, how do you get to the theater? Well, you go to the casino, and you go across the casino, and you turn left. <laughs> how do you get to the restaurant? Well, they're around the casino. <laughs> how do you get to checkout? Well, go through the casino to checkout. I'm like, in a restaurant. I'd like to go to the bathroom. And they're like, you got to go out in the casino. I'm like... <laughs> I'm not gonna. It, oh, fine. fine. <laughs> We're pretty much out of time. It's been great. I have. I had more stuff to talk about, and I'm not gonna get to it. For God's sakes! Last time I even promised to talk about technology this month, and I didn't get to it. You don't know that because the idiot editor hasn't finished last month <laughs> or the month before. But this editor, he's gonna be great. So you guys are gonna see this by like June. Of 2009. <laughs> See y'all next month. See? See, that was two pages. I got through two pages. Oh. I didn't even get to learn to weld. I didn't get to learn to weld, for God's sake. I didn't, I didn't get to drill bit Taylor. This is good, because I got nothing to say on drill bit Taylor. <laughs> Almost nothing. I didn't get to Andrew in his freaking dissertation. I'm going to mention because it'll, it'll help me bet. Andrew Williams said the other thing we do. He's a teacher. He doesn't own a car because he likes to be annoying. So we have to <laughs> drive him everywhere. <laughs>